welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. You are in store for another weekly WW meal prep. I have three absolutely delicious recipes coming your way. Breakfast, lunch, and a snack. I cannot wait to share these with you. They are all absolutely amazingly delicious. WW friendly and I'm serious you guys, such a great set of recipes this week. So if you wanna see what I have in store for this week's meal prep, just stay tuned. For my breakfast this week, I'm gonna be making a biscuits and gravy breakfast casserole. I am stoked for this. I'm simply going to pair this with some fruit. I may throw in an egg if I'm extra hungry, but my goal is to have a slice of this and some fruit. So let me show you what is in our biscuits and gravy breakfast casserole. First, you're going to need some milk or milk alternative of your choice. You could really use anything. Jimmy Dean fully cooked turkey sausage crumbles. Canned biscuits. I ended up having to buy two cans because one can wasn't enough, but I won't use both cans. But these are super inexpensive and these are less smart points than Pillsbury Grands and some of those other big flaky biscuits. So I just went ahead and bought two cans. We'll use the rest of it for biscuits for dinner. You'll also need some salt and pepper gravy mix i wish i would have bought country gravy but i'm excited to use the chicken gravy i think it's gonna actually give it some good flavor but you could really use whatever gravy you want fat free shredded cheese and of course some eggs so let's get started on this week's breakfast so the first thing we need to do is chop up our biscuits so i have one and a half cans or so basically 12 ounces of the biscuits we're going to go ahead and just cut these into smaller pieces so i'm going to go ahead and cut each of my biscuits into four little pieces and we're just going to set those aside and that is going to be layered on the bottom of our baking dish to give us that whole biscuits and gravy vibe Whispering soft to learn signs, wrapping you around my finger, gently touch. All right, next we're going to take our 9x13 pan, spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. We have our pieces of biscuit, and we're basically just going to lay these in the bottom of our 9x13 pan before we add on our sausage. So if you don't use the Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles and you use a sausage that is raw you'll just want to cook that down before adding it to your pan but the jimmy dean sausage crumbles are pre-cooked so again it's just kind of an easier step and they are extremely low in smart points you can have a half of a cup for two points so i love them they have great flavor so it's kind of my go-to as far as adding sausage to any type of dish so let me get these biscuits on the bottom of my pan here and we'll add on our jimmy dean sausage after your biscuits are laid in the bottom of your pan, we're going to go ahead and take our Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles and we're just going to scatter them right on top of our biscuits. Get them as even as you can, just so you have a little bit of that yummy sausage in every single bite. We are going to use the entire package. That is what is figured into the points as well. So this package, by the way, is a 9.6 ounce package of sausage. So I've got those laid over the biscuits. And then we're gonna take our one cup of fat-free cheese and we're just going to sprinkle that right over the top as well. Now this is not a super cheesy breakfast casserole because biscuits and gravy generally don't even have cheese. So I'm okay using fat-free cheese because it's literally one cup over the entire pan of the biscuit casserole. Next, we're gonna whisk together our eggs and our milk, salt and pepper, and get that ready to put on top. All right, we're ready for our eggs. So in my bowl here, I've cracked six eggs. To that, I'm gonna go ahead and add my one half of a cup of milk or milk alternative, whatever it is that you decide to use. We're just gonna give that a quick whisk just to try to incorporate the milk and the eggs just a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in salt and pepper. Now you can add as much or as little that you want into your dish. So I'm just gonna put a couple pinches of each salt and pepper. Give that a good whisk together, get everything nice and combined. And then we're gonna pour this directly on top of our casserole. 
Once our eggs are mixed together, we're just gonna go ahead and pour that right over the top of our casserole. Make sure you get your eggs as even as possible. This is what is going to bind everything together. So you wanna make sure that you do get your eggs as evenly spread out as possible. So I just like to watch and make sure that just all the biscuit pieces are covered. And I feel like during the cooking process, the eggs will puff up enough to kind of fill in those gaps. So go ahead and add in your eggs. And then the last step is we're gonna take our gravy packet here and mix it with a cup of water and add that as well. Whispering soft, alluring signs Wrapping you around my finger Gently touch, full of spell Blinding you into another Sneaking around, hunt and pray To find me another lover Behind the so once your gravy is whisked together, we are not heating our gravy. So I just mixed it in with some lukewarm water. We're gonna go ahead and pour that over the top of our casserole. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Wait until this gravy just soaks in with the delicious eggs and cheese. Uh, this, you guys, is gonna be so delicious. So go ahead and add your gravy. And then the last step is this goes in the oven. 350 degrees for anywhere to 30 to 40 minutes, just depending on your oven. All right, I just pulled her out of the oven. Look at how beautiful she is. This smells incredible. My house smells like a Sunday morning breakfast, so I'm very excited. Look at how puffed up it got. I mean, it's filling half of the pan here with the biscuit mix, so it looks delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into eight servings. My recipe makes eight servings. Package it up with my fruit, and I'll be back to show you my completed breakfast and give you the smart points. So here are my breakfasts for the week. You guys, this looks so good. So I went ahead again and cut that into eight servings. This is a huge serving. I didn't expect it to be this large, so I'm really glad that I chose eight servings instead of six. Now you can cut it into six. You'll just have to readjust your smart points accordingly. But if you do decide to go ahead and cut your casserole into eight servings, it is five smart points per serving on both the purple and the blue plan. And it is six smart points per serving on the green plan. So you guys, this entire breakfast, six smart points. For lunches this week, I'm going to be making a creamy lemon chicken pasta. I've been craving pasta and this sounds bright and fresh. I'm so excited. So let me show you what is in our pasta. First, you're going to need some salt and pepper, Parmesan cheese, fat-free or reduced fat cream cheese, flat leaf fresh parsley, a lemon because you're gonna be using the juice and the zest, green frozen peas, two breasts of chicken, and these are just medium to large size breasts of chicken, and of course some pasta. So I'm gonna be using my favorite pasta. This is the Fiber Gourmet Light Spaghetti. What I love about this pasta is the taste. The taste and texture is outstanding. On top of that, it has 19 grams of fiber and eight grams of protein per serving. And my friends, you can have two ounces of this pasta for only three smart points. Any other traditional pasta is going to cost you five to six smart points for a two ounce serving. So it is a huge point bang for your buck. And I'm telling you, it is delicious pasta. Like I've mentioned before, my husband says this is the only pasta we're allowed to have in our house because he loves it. It really holds up its taste and texture in the cooking process, so it's delicious. You can purchase this off of the Nettrition website. There's a link down in the description box for that. They have hundreds of WW friendly items. I highly recommend you check that site out. And again, the link is in the description box below. So of course, I'll be using my fiber gourmet pasta. So let's get started on our lunches. While our pasta is cooking down, I went ahead and chopped up my chicken, salt and peppered it with some nonstick cooking spray here in a skillet. We're gonna allow this to cook down until it is browned, until it is cooked completely through. And our pasta is coming along just a couple more minutes on that. Again, make sure that you are reserving some of the pasta water. We'll be adding in our peas here shortly. After your chicken is nice and browned, I scraped up those brown bits on the bottom of my pan. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my quarter cup of lemon juice. 
and we're just going to give that kind of a quick stir just get that lemon juice kind of coated over that chicken and then we're also going to be adding in our cream cheese so i have four ounces of fat-free cream cheese and i'm just going to kind of break this up while it's on the heat and then we are actually going to remove this from the heat and allow that cream cheese to melt and coat the chicken once your cream cheese is mixed in and nice and melted uh, it smells delicious we're going to go ahead and add in the lemon zest. So I went ahead and just zested my entire Meyer lemon and squeezed the juice out of the lemon as well. And that's what we added to the chicken. We're also going to put in half of a cup of Parmesan cheese. And we're also going to put in that chopped up flat leaf parsley. And then we're just going to mix this all together. So we're just going to stir until everything is nice and combined. And then we're going to add it to a bowl with our noodles and peas. And that's where we're going to use that reserved pasta liquid just to get the consistency right of our pasta. This is nice and thick right now. And we want it more saucy. So we are going to go ahead and add some of that pasta. So I'm going to get this mixed up. We'll get this into a bowl and get our pasta ready to go. So I have everything combined. I've got my pasta and my peas here in a bowl. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the chicken, cream cheese, deliciousness mixture. This smells incredible. You can smell the cheese, but you can also smell the lemon. So it's that bright, fresh smell. Ugh, yum. And then we're going to go ahead and mix this up. Make sure that the chicken mixture is nice and combined here with our pasta. And what we're going to do to get a creamier texture to this is we're going to take that reserved pasta liquid and we're going to add it in tablespoon at a time because we don't want to add too much. We just want to make sure everything gets coated the noodles so you're just not eating a dry noodle and that chicken mixture is more of a sauce that's going over your noodles but this looks so good so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more of that pasta water and just keep adding until you get your desired consistency and then this makes four servings so that is a lot of pasta so I'm gonna go ahead and divide this equally into four containers Whispering soft to learn signs Wrapping you around my finger Gently touch, full of spell Blinding you into another Sneaking around, hunt and pray To find me so here are my lunches for the week. I did only make four because usually one day during the week I'm out and about at lunchtime and I just pick something up or have leftovers. So let me show you what I'm having for lunch. So look at this pasta. It is really good. I tried it. It has definitely a really cheesy, creamy texture and taste, but that lemon just brightens it up and makes it so delicious. So this meal prep container, big side is full to the max with this pasta so that is a lot that is a large serving for the point so let's go over the points of the pasta so if you are on the green plan it is nine smart points per serving if you are on the blue or purple plan it is six smart points per serving however if you use a zero point pasta on the purple plan and let me just tell you that fiber gourmet should be zero points on purple because it has better macro and micronutrients than any of those other pastas but that's just my opinion if you're listening, Weight Watchers. But if you use a zero point pasta, then it is only two smart points per serving on the purple plan. And that is a lot of food for two, six, or even nine smart points. I'm pairing that with a serving of the Trader Joe's frozen Brussels sprouts. I'll add a little salt and pepper, spray butter to that for zero a couple of cuties for zero. And then I think for a dessert this week, these have been in my pantry a while. I have never even tried them. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a try. I heard they're really good if you microwave them for a few seconds. So this is the Lemon Fiber 170 Calorie Brownies. And these are two smart points on any plan. So my lunch, since I am on the green plan, is going to be a total of 11 smart points. If you're on the blue plan, it is eight with the brownie. The purple plan is eight with the brownie or four if you use a zero point pasta so check it out this is an amazing lunch i cannot wait for pasta and chicken and lemon and all the things so this is my lunch for the week for a sweet treat or a snack this week i'm going to be making pumpkin bars with cream cheese frosting you heard that right pumpkin bars cream cheese frosting not only are these gluten free but you can also make these with zero artificial sweetener. Unfortunately, I do not have any regular powdered sugar on hand, so I am going to use a substitute, but the points will not change if you use regular 
full sugar, powdered sugar. I'm also using regular brown sugar. So you, if you are not a fan of artificial sweeteners, this is a great recipe for you. They are extremely low points and they're frosted. They're frosted. So let me show you what is in these pumpkin bars. First, you're going to need some milk or milk alternative. You can use almond milk. I'm just trying to use this up because it's about expired. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my Carb Master milk. You'll also need some unsweetened applesauce. PB2 or powdered peanut butter, pumpkin pie spice. So of course, as you know, if you remember from fall, this is my all time favorite seasonings ever. I love Dax so much, especially this pumpkin spice. It is stellar. It is so good. Dax seasonings are all natural, no MSG, no salt. So they are great before weigh-in or if you're somebody that watches your salt intake, you cannot go wrong with Dax, but I love this pumpkin spice so much. What is in here, I think that makes it so good, is cinnamon, spices, and honey. That's it. There's nothing artificial in this, and that honey just really elevates the flavor. So if you're interested in Dax, they do have over 20 spices. Go ahead and use my link down in the description box and my code here on the screen for 10% off and free shipping. Highly Highly recommend. If you want to know my suggestions for Dax, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below and I'll tell you my top five or six favorites, but this one is definitely one of those. So this is the Dax Pumpkin Spice. And then I'm going to be using some vanilla extract. I'm going to be using the powdered erythritol, but again, you can use regular powdered sugar. You'll also need eggs, salt, canned pumpkin, fat-free or reduced fat cream cheese, brown sugar, baking powder, and almond flour. So let's get started on our pumpkin bars. So we're gonna put together the base of our pumpkin bars with most of the ingredients. So we are gonna start with one cup of our pumpkin puree. I highly recommend an organic pumpkin puree. I notice a huge difference in the quality than the traditional pumpkin. And it's really not that much more, especially if you pick up the Fred Meyer Simple Truth brand or even the Trader Joe's. It really, honestly, you guys, makes a big difference in the quality. So one cup of pumpkin puree. We're also going to add a quarter cup of our powdered peanut butter or our PB2 a quarter cup of our brown sugar. I have the dark brown, but you could use light brown as well, whatever you prefer. One quarter cup of unsweetened applesauce. So this recipe has fantastic ingredients. We're also going to add two whole eggs. And then we are going to add some salt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a pinch, which is normally what I'll do. And then I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You know, I don't usually measure. I just kind of eyeball it. Same with my pumpkin pie spice. The recipe wants about two teaspoons. So I'm just going to eyeball about two teaspoons, but I generally will overdo my spices. And then lastly is some baking powder. We want one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So there's one and then half of baking powder. And then we're gonna go ahead and just mix this together until everything is combined. We definitely don't wanna over mix the batter. Once everything is combined, we're gonna go ahead and add in one cup of almond flour. And again, we do not wanna over mix. We just wanna stir until everything is combined. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out an eight by eight baking pan or brownie pan, spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. We're gonna go ahead and add our pumpkin bar mixture to that and get that into a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Into another, sneaking around, hunt and pray to find me another lover. Behind closed doors, an empty space, we're in a secret love encounter. I'm a lonely heart, heart feeling line. I take what's mine, then I leave behind. Our bars are in the oven, so I went ahead and room temperatured out five ounces of my fat-free cream cheese. To that, I am going to add two tablespoons of powdered sugar, and I'm going to be adding in some vanilla extract. I want about a half of a teaspoon of that. And then we are going to use almond milk or milk alternative of your choice. And I would add about half. 
And we're just gonna whisk this until we get a frosting consistency. And then that's what we will be using to top our pumpkin bars. Now you do not have to make the frosting. You can simply just eat the pumpkin bars without and save yourself some points. But I decided to go ahead and make up the frosting just to kind of show you guys what it looks like. And then we will top our pumpkin bars with our frosting when they are nice and cooled. Pumpkin bars are out of the oven. They look and smell really good. I'm going to let these cool completely before we frost them, but I will cut them into servings. We'll add some frosting and I'll give you the smart points. All right, our pumpkin bars are nice and cool. These look and smell great. I went ahead and grabbed a little spatula. We have our frosting here. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm actually going to pop it out my pumpkin bars. Ooh, look at that. So you can kind of see how thick they are. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this flipped over and we'll get it frosted. So we are ready to frost. So I'm going to go ahead and just put my cream cheese frosting here on my pumpkin bars. And I'm just going to spread it evenly over the top and we'll get these all frosted and then we'll let them cool. I think I may even throw them in the fridge for a few minutes. Let them get nice and cool before we cut them into the 12 servings. So this whole pan is going to make 12 frosted gluten-free delicious pumpkin bars. So let me get these frosted. We'll get these cut up into 12 servings and I'll be back to show you the serving size and give you the smart points. So I went ahead and cut my bars into 12 servings. This is one serving. You guys look at this. Yum. Look at how delicious that looks. It's nice and thick. It is so moist. And then you add that frosting on top and that is so delicious looking. I did try a little bite and they are really, really good. The mix of the PB2 and the almond butter just gives it such a fantastic flavor. So delicious. Okay. So here's the information. So cutting our bars into 12 servings with the frosting and the fact that I used a powdered sugar alternative, that makes these bars three smart points per bar, no matter what plan you're on. Now, if you use a regular powdered sugar, they will be four smart points per bar with the frosting. If you choose not to frost them, they are only two smart points per bar, no matter what plan you follow. And remember, there is no artificial anything in the two smart points or the four smart points with frosting and real powdered sugar. So these look delicious. I cannot wait to dig in. It is going to be a snack for me a little bit later today. Highly recommend these pumpkin bars. Here are my snacks for the week. As always, I'm having my built bar as my morning snack. I do change up the flavors every day. Just kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for, but all of the built bars are three smart points per bar with the exception here of the peanut butter. This one is delicious, you guys. It is four smart points. It has real organic peanut butter, little bits of peanuts in it absolutely delicious. So if you've never tried Built Bar, they do offer a sample pack, which is amazing. You can use my code here on the screen to get 10% off and free shipping off of Built Bar. Once you find your favorites, you can order full size boxes of individual flavors or a mixed box. But stay tuned guys for tomorrow, the 21st, Built Bar is having a huge promotion. They are releasing two new flavors and 15% off all orders when you go through my link down in the description box. So if you're gonna order Built Bar, I highly recommend you wait until tomorrow. Use the link down in the description box. I'll put it at the very top for you. It will automatically apply the 15% off and everything on their site is 15% off. So it's a great time to try Built Bar and order those new flavors. So my morning snack ranges from three to four smart points, just depending on what Built Bar I have. My other snack for the afternoon will be a non-fat Greek yogurt. These are the Dan and Lighten Fit. These are two smart points a piece. I did buy these on sale at my store because they expire on the 24. So I just want to make sure I eat them up before they expire. So I'm going to be having a two point yogurt with one of my two point chicken snack sticks from Costco. Now, if you guys have not seen my Costco video, I literally go through the entire store, give you a complete rundown of everything and anything WW friendly at Costco or Sam's Club. So check that video out. I'll link it down below for you guys. But this is one of my huge finds. These chicken snack sticks, and these are natural small batch, 15 grams of protein, no antibiotics, this huge stick. Look at this, you guys. It's almost as long as my cutting board is only two smart points. And they also have a beef stick for three smart points. I'll be getting those next, but 
These are so good. So I'm gonna have a two Smart Point ginormous chicken snack stick and a non-fat Greek yogurt in the afternoon for four points and my Built Bar for three to four points. So those will be my snacks for the upcoming week. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you enjoyed these three recipes. I'm telling you, you will not be sorry if you give all of these a try because they were so incredibly delicious. All of the recipes are linked down in the description box below along with all of my discount codes, things that I can save you money on, and links to my favorite WW items. Also is the link to my Facebook group, so if you have not joined us, please head on over and join the 13,000 members. They are amazing, supportive. We answer all your questions, tons of great tips, tricks, ideas, special giveaways, you name it, it happens on my Facebook group. So we'd love it if you'd head on over and join us there. If you love meal preps, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe. Make sure you hit the little bell. It simply notifies you every time a new video is uploaded. I upload almost daily, so you don't want to miss out. And leave those comments down below. I want to know which of these recipes are you dying to try. So leave that down in the comments for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. What's it like to be the one that he turns to when he's